What's up guys? Today I just wanted to quickly talk about how to bridge the gap between being a beginner programmer and getting into that intermediate to middle tier programmer phase. I've been focusing a lot on optimization videos lately, especially with like scriptable objects and things like that. And I just want to kind of point out some things people should be considering uh, that they probably don't know about if you're just starting out that really kind of changes your mindset and makes you a better programmer because there's like quite a few things to take into account when you're approaching a problem and how you're going to solve it and the main difference between someone just starting out and someone who's more experienced is well <laughs> they have the experience to know what a better approach would be as opposed to some others and before i just dive into a bunch of stuff and just start listing out things i do think it's really important for me to say up front i think when you're first learning you should only only be focused on just getting things to work. You don't want to worry about getting them to work well, you just want them to work at all. And I know people disagree with me on that, it's a personal philosophy of mine, but you don't know good from bad yet. How could you? You're just starting out. And I'm talking, this is probably like months into development, depending on how quick of a learner you are. And everybody's situation is of course different, but really I think you just focus on getting things to work. I see it so often in my community and in a professional setting, people are putting the cart before the horse and trying to make things run well, but you don't even know if your solution's working in the first place, and then they get bogged down, it's too complex of a thing, and people can just get frustrated and, and quit. I think it's actually really important to do things wrong, so that when you learn how to do things better in the future, you can kind of look back and have this point of reference to be like, oh yeah, my, my way sucked, this is like way better. And it actually, you know, resonates with you longer in your career. But that's the end of my little soapbox moment. Let's say you've been developing for a couple of months now. You're starting to get a good feel for it. You feel comfortable. Solutions to problems are coming much faster to you. And now you want to start worrying about how can I do things better? So the first thing I want to talk about is what's known as big O notation. And really what this is, is it measures the time complexity and computational complexity of your algorithms which is kind of like a mouthful in an explanation. But what that really means, it's like how efficient is your code? And so I'm gonna try and illustrate this point in like less than 30 seconds. Okay, so take a look at the code I have right here. It's pretty quick to go over, I swear. I'm basically just making a list of integers and we're gonna initialize it with a number we put in. So if I put in like a hundred and I run it, then we're just gonna make a list with a hundred integers in it from zero to 99 in this case. We're literally just doing a for loop. So right here we have our first algorithm. We're actually inserting X amount of numbers, right? In this case it was a hundred, but I could have put in five, I could have put in a thousand, I could have put in a million. And we know that we have to go from one to a thousand or whatever number I inputted and go through all of them and insert those numbers into the list, right? So in big O notation, this would be called O of N operation because you have to go through every single number at least once. So if I put in one, we only have to do it one time. If I put in 10, we have to do it 10 times. If I put in a million, we have to do it a million times. Makes sense. So now I just uncommented this line of code here and we're basically gonna say, hey, do we have a number that we wanna search for in this list? So if I created a list of numbers from zero to 99 and I'm saying, do we have the number 50 in this list? Well, we can run it and look, it says yes. We do have 50 in the list. You see, we had to go all the way from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way down to 50, and then we were able to stop. But let's say we put in a number that was greater than 100, right? Let's say we wanted to look for the number 5,000 here, which we know is not in the list. But in order for us to actually guarantee that, we have to go through every single number in the list from zero to 99, and we say, nope, it's not in there. So again, this search algorithm complexity would also be ON because you have to go through every single number at least once. And you measure these things by the worst case. So again, you have to go through every single number. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but with a dictionary of integers. So with a dictionary, you have a key and a value. And setting up a dictionary is the exact same. You have to do a for loop and go through n amount of times to insert every single thing. That's fine, but where it's completely different is where we're doing the lookup to see if the number's in the dictionary. Because we can just say, hey, at this key, do we have a value that matches our target? Oh, if we do, true. If we don't, false. And it actually makes a lot more sense visually if I just run this thing. And you'll see in this case for the list, we had to do a hundred checks to see if we found it and we didn't. Whereas this dictionary one right here, 
we literally only had to check one number and it said, no, it's not in the list. So for searching in a dictionary, in big O standards, this would be order of one. Order of one is the best complexity you can get in an algorithm. So in this case, when you have like a big collection of things and you wanna search to see if it's in there, well, using a dictionary would be a great tool to use for that problem. And so I think I went well over the 30 seconds there. Sorry, but I, I think it really illustrated the point. You definitely have to study this stuff, like go watch some YouTube videos, go read an article on this, go learn what the different complexities are for common algorithms. This is just like the first thing you need to take into consideration. And one of the most important is how efficient can your code be? How efficient is your solution? And just knowing these things and mastering this is enough to really put you ahead of the game. Honestly, it is. Having efficient code is probably the watermark of a good programmer. And to some people, it's the only thing that matters. I am not one of those people at all. In fact, I would trade efficiency in a lot of cases for maintainability. Code maintainability is essential. It's everything. It doesn't matter how efficient your code's running if you can't even work on your project anymore because it just takes so long to change things or add things because everything's so tightly dependent and it's a pain or it's really complex to read and understand what the hell's going on. Like if you have the best algorithm ever, but no one is able to read through it and understand it, then no one's gonna wanna change it. No one's gonna touch it. It'll just kind of sit there and maybe that's fine. In fact, that happens a lot in a professional setting, but I don't think that means that's a good code. I mean, from one point of view it is because it's running really efficiently, but from a human readable maintainability standpoint, it's awful. And so it's kind of like a fine dance between these two schools of thought. And only when you're able to kind of get both of them together in harmony is when you have a master of code. Like, let's say this, let's say you got on a brand new project with an existing code base. You don't know anything that's going on with it. And you're just reading through some code in front of you. There's no comments. You're able to just read through it once and understand everything that's going on in this class or something like that. Well, that's the mark of very, very good code. It's fantastic code. And now you add in this side of it's also really optimized and running efficiently. Well, now you have masterful code. That's a masterpiece. That's what everyone should be striving for, but it's also easier said than done. And so it really boils down to, I think what separates beginner programmers and intermediate and then also even like expert level and fantastic coders is that you're able to do things in a maintainable way that's human readable, clean, easy to understand, if you start changing stuff up, it doesn't really break everything, right? It's like decoupled. You're able to swap things out with no hassle. And then also it runs really optimally. And ultimately, not only from a computational standpoint is your code not very complex, but from the human element, your code is also not that complex. From an architectural standpoint, your code is not that complex. Really, like the longer you program and the more like garbage code you see in your day day, you're really gonna understand that simple is what people are striving for, simple things. I would trade a little bit of computational complexity as long as I can read that thing and know what it's doing. I really would. And again, people do not agree with that. A lot of people do, but there's different schools of thought on this. But regardless, whatever you actually care about personally for what represents great code to you is kind of irrelevant. At the end of the day, what makes you a better programmer is at least considering these things and to take this into your solution and to start designing your solutions smartly and efficiently and maintainably. And so that's why I've been making tutorials using the things like scriptable objects, using events. These things kind of remove some of those dependencies that make things hard to change going forward. And when you get a larger code base, things kind of fall apart and development just takes longer because it's hard to make changes. Really, that's just what it is. And so if you're watching through this and you already know all of this, it's not news to you, it might not be that exciting. You're already an intermediate programmer, congratulations. But if you are a beginner, this definitely is news to you. And this is how you're gonna really shift your perspective out of how do I just get things working, which is all you should have been worried about until now. And now you're gonna start thinking about how do I get things working well? But I don't want you to do it too quickly. You don't have to worry about it too much. If you're working on your own project and you're already deep into it, stop freaking out and trying to convert your entire you know, Unity project into some new scriptable object architecture. Just take things one step at a time, one problem at a time. It's not a huge deal, especially if it's your own project. 
If you're working professionally, it's a little different, but if you're working professionally, you probably already know some of these things, at least you should. So I just wanted to quickly bring this up. I would really like to discuss with you guys, so leave in the comments any of your thoughts down below, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Thank you.